If you're looking for a chunky ribbed hat that isn't chunky on top, this is the pattern for you. Up at the top, the stitches become streamlined, creating less bulk and a smoother look. And to do this, I'm using slip stitches. Slip stitches are still stitches. They just don't take up as much space because they don't draw through a loop. Now get your yarn and let's get started. Let's get started with this easy hat. So I've got my bulky yarn here, and when you're looking for bulky, it will either say it on the front. This one says chunky, but it's a bulky. And let's see, where is it at? Right there, category five. And it will tell you what size hook to use. In this case, these are the knitting needles. This is the crochet hook, and it's suggesting a 6.5 millimeter. All right, so to get started, I'm going to chain 45. Make my slip knot. Pull that snug. And I will chain 45. And see you at the end of the chain for the next row. And I got my chain done. So skip that last or first chain, last one you made and then just go in and work single crochets in this back loop going up a loop and i'm going to do this until i have 10 stitches remaining all right so i'm at the point where i have 10 stitches left and this is where i'm going to compact the top part of the hat and to do that, I'm going to use slip stitches. And you probably know slip stitches from ending the round of something, maybe if you're doing a border or doing a uh, working in the round in a circle. And that just makes a smooth, flush line because it doesn't draw in that extra loop. So using that same principle, I'm going to just slip these stitches. So you pull up a loop like you normally would for a stitch instead of yarning over, just slip it through. And keep these relatively loose if you can because they're going to be a little bit more tricky to work in as you pass through them. Two, so I'm keeping it very loose. Pull up enough. There we go. So if you don't pull your yarn up enough during the slip stitch, it's going to make it even more tight. starting to taper it will really exaggerate as you're working so I'm chain one and go into that back loop and slip stitch again and because I pulled up enough yarn up here I am able to work into them so my first ten again I'll just be doing the slip stitch in the back loop so you'll only be working in the back loop except the very last stitch of the side where the brim will be I'll show you that when I get there but if you've ever done a ribbed crochet project before 
you've probably worked a whoops a regular stitch full stitch instead of a back loop stitch at the end of the row keeps things smooth and they're not dangling and uh, just looking untidy at the end and that will be the case with this let's see how many I've been talking and not counting seven you can use a stitch marker but as you start going you'll see right away when you get to that final 10 stitches of your row. I really have to turn back to see it. Oops. It's me 10 and now I'm just going to work regular back loop single crochet down to the bottom. This chunky yarn works up so quickly. You'll see it come together pretty somewhat fast. Not I would say not in a day, but maybe over a long weekend. And you don't have to think a lot or look at a pattern back and forth. You just have to keep your measuring device, whatever if you're using a ruler or a tape measure. This is small enough that a ruler let me think. Now you will need a tape measure for the circumference of the head. Alright, so I'm on my last stitch and I'm going to make sure to go through both loops. And that's nice and even. Now you can see as I lay it out, it's curving a bit. We can see how the top looks. It's twisting until I do a couple more rows. It's going to be like this. You can see it's tapered where the top will be. tapered up here along the top and then the bottom is nice and stretchy not too stretchy but just enough and it's also time for me to add um, the second ball of yarn so I'm going to keep working until I reach the right width as shown in the pattern for the head size <laughs> I'm excited to show you the project trackers I have designed and I wish I did this years ago because they have been really wonderful to have. So first of all, nice size, fits right into a project bag and this is the large print. In the front of the large print, I want to show you, there is a true to life 4 inch ruler so you can check your gauge easily. You don't have to fumble around look for a ruler. I've used this quite a bit in just the past what, four projects I've used in this book. And there's also small print. And each of these books has sections for small projects, mid-sized, and large projects like blankets. So the small projects, there's 60 stitches, like a you know, dishcloth something like that. And there's room for notes and I have space after each stitch that you check off. If you have to put a note, maybe you changed a color, you changed a stitch, you changed your hook, all of that can be in there. Mid-size projects, 180 stitches and there's room for notes. And then the blanket size, 330 stitches. 
and then let's compare the large size print, which I need because I have terrible eyes since I was a teenager, compared to the small size. So handy. And of course, a link will be available to get these if you want one for yourself. And I finished my hat piece here, and I'm just going to show you how to double check your measurement. And you already should know, you know, before you create this whole thing, that you've got about 12 inches here in length and in centimeters. That is about 32. Can be slightly longer. I wouldn't go shorter because then your brim's going to suffer. A little bit. Right now. I've started seaming my hat together. So when you come to the end, figure out which side you want to be the wrong side and which side you want to be the right side. They should look relatively similar. But if for some reason maybe you had a little bump or you had to um, um, join your two yarn balls and maybe there's a unsightly little divot somewhere and you want that to be on the wrong side. Just go ahead and turn it that way. And then after you've done your border row, you see here, I'm coming up and I'm going to, I have it marked, slip through, here's my, the starting chain, and then the last rib row. I'm going into the, I put a crochet hook in there just to show that it's the outside loop, just like you were doing when you were doing your ribbing. You're working in the outside loop. Pull that yarn through. And then I'm going to slip it through. So go in. That outside loop. I have to use this again. Pull through and slip the stitch. Just like you were doing up at the top of these top rows. So I'm going to do that all the way up to the top of the hat and then I'll show you how to seam up the top. Alright, I have finished seaming. I'm all the way up at the top. So this is the top of the hat. This is the bottom. And I've cut a very long tail, about 20 inches, maybe a little bit longer, because I need the length to not only close up the top, but I want to leave enough of a tail that I can weave it in pretty easily. So this was my final stitch. I'm going to pull that yarn all the way through so it doesn't go anywhere. And then thread it onto a chonky embroidery needle. Right? It's got to have a big opening for this chunky yarn. I call my big cat Chunky because he is. <laughs> I'm pull this through. Oops. No, it goes through. I've used this before. Yarn and cooperate, please. There we go. Okay, so now to close this up, let me move this hook out of the way because I'm not using that again. It's raining here today quite heavily if you hear that. So I'm going to go, I'm still on the wrong side, although I don't think it matters all that much. This. Oh, that tail is long. Let me get it doubled up a little bit better here. So I'm going to go back and forth like this. In and out. In and out. This was my starting tail from when I started at the beginning. 
okay. in and out all the way around. Put them at the end of this, and then I'm going to cinch it together, and it should snug up and close up this hole. Be careful not to break the yarn. Yarn does break. A little rough with it. going to work around and go back and forth here. Yeah, those back and forth stitches are going to close it up up here really nicely. That looks so cozy. I'm excited for this to be done. Make sure I go down into the stitch so that the actual seaming yarn doesn't show. These chunky hats are a little different than our category four yarns. And of course I still need to weave that one in. I've come to the end and just secured that across. Let's turn it around, see how it looks. So now this is the right side out. Yeah, very nice. 
off the cuff. I am certainly going to try it on, but this is for, this particular one is for a man. I'm going to try it on. Oh, I love how it's looking. So, I like this yarn too, very soft. So make a nice chinky blanket as well.